Camera Obscura are a great pop group. Spend a week in a dusty library Waiting for some words to jump in me We met by a trick of fate French Navy, my sailor me I would ask to go further and I've prepared a list and it's an important list. I'm going to read it out. I don't care how long it takes. I would say the Camera Obscura are this kind of group. You put them in with Brad, Al Stewart, Emmett Rhodes, Flaming Groovies, Gordon Lightfoot, Graham Parsons, Dion, Donny Hathaway, Judy Collins, Feist, Nico Case, The Birds, Gillian Welsh, The Zombies, Cat Power, Nick Lowe, Shuggy Otis, Sandy Denny, Scottish grandmother, Martha Reeves, Elvis Costello, Buffalo Springfield, Nancy Griffith, Velvet Underground and Nico, Bon Iver, Tim Hardin, Scott Walker, Big Star, My Bloody Valentine, Sutherland Brothers and Quiver, Scottish, Elliot Smith, Spirit, Willie Nelson, I could go on, actually, Dusty Springfield, but what I'm trying to say, in a way, is that what I hate about what they do to Camera Obscura is they put them in a box, and I think we should always break them out of that box. They put them in boxes in many different ways. They say Scottish, and then they say Scottish-like, and they use phrases like Bell and Sebastian, the pastels. I would actually take it back a little further. I'd take it back centuries, actually. I'd take it back, you know, lullabies, laments, and love songs from the 16th century. I'd take it back to Marmalade. Shady. That I, that I ever really wanted to tell people anything. I, I wanted to write lyrics that were real. And how therapeutic is, is it for you? You mentioned that these are things you wouldn't really be able to say normally, so you say them in song. So is, is there a part of it that they are, for you, a kind of relief, a liberation? Hugely, absolutely, without a doubt. And I think that's one of the things that I've come to learn about myself, writing this album and the last album, that you can, you know, sort yourself out by doing this. Mm. It's a wee bit like cheating, but, um, you know. If you respond to something like Camera Obscura, you re you're responding to it from a very personal point of view. And I hesitate at all times to, to really pin it down. And I think the problem that a band like Camera Obscura have historically faced is that because it's so difficult to really talk about, it tends to, it tends to be abbreviated. Shortcuts are used, kind of clumsy, cliched terms are used to, to put it in the box, you know, that it is tweed, that it is, you know, Scottish, that it's chamber pop, that it's spectre pop. Uh, that it's that it's light and, and flimsy and insipid. Whereas in fact, it's actually harder uh, and stranger and more dangerous in a noisy world to be that delicate. Oddly enough, the more you, you pay attention, the more you realize actually how deep and how menacing it oddly is. So it sounds, it's got that kind of weird combination of, of bliss and, and merriness and melancholy. The band are built around these songs and these songs have come from me being or feeling a bit sad about things. Yeah. Like something good out of your misery. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Great pop songs tend to be depressing, though, don't they? I think so. Yeah. But a lot of people don't get the sadness in pop songs. Mm. But we're not just about trying to be sad or something. I don't find it very easy to write about being happy. I'm too busy Why? being happy Why? at that oh, right. moment so, in time so to write that, it down. And you also think that maybe a happy pop, pop song sounds too sort of glib. I can still enjoy that but I don't think it's something that we do mm. well. I think if, when you're unhappy anyway, you're kind of driven a bit more to self-reflection and that's yeah. more interesting and I think ultimately more productive um, for any artist or writer. Mm. So it kind of creates a, a, a kind of bigger intensity of feeling? I think it probably does. I see I'm just the drummer. So I just <laughs> yeah, no, for, the, for a drummer, you're doing a lot. <laughs> the word pop music has become diminished and diluted and dirtied by the activities of people like Simon Cowell, but it should not make any of us waver from a loyalty to the absolute exquisite nature of what ultimately pop music is. And 